You may have already surmised that I'm reporting to you from Barbados, where this week McGill University entered the operational stage of its Project HARP, High Altitude Research Program. It says, unlikely a project that ever jointly involved the university, half a dozen Canadian companies, and the United States Army. McGill has had a research station here for years, but more than a few islanders began to wonder whether somebody hadn't completely lost his mind when a great 16-inch naval gun was mounted on the beach here, and McGill announced that it was going to send a space research vehicle ten times higher into the atmosphere than any gun had ever fired before. But let's start this story from the beginning. The man behind the project is McGill's 34-year-old professor of engineering science, Dr. Jerry Bull, an intense, impatient genius who's been working for five years on a cut-rate research program. His projectiles would bring back information about meteorite, meteorology, and aerodynamics at less than a tenth the cost of rockets. They would be fired rapidly in any weather. They would come within 200 feet of their targets, he said, and they would climb to more than 130 miles. The United States Army liked the idea and gave McGill a contract to prove his technique. Two 16-inch barrels, smoothbored to Dr. Bull's specifications, were sent to Barbados in the Caribbean. They were 68 feet long, and each weighed 140 tons. They were believed to be the heaviest objects ever moved across a beach, and they hadn't been fired in 42 years. Landing the barrels became one of the biggest projects on the island, employing nearly 100 men. And it also became a tourist attraction. The barrels were moved more than two and a half miles to Paragon, near Fowl Bay. In Ottawa, meanwhile, this country's only private industry producing space research vehicles, computing devices of Canada, installed the telemetry, instruments sensitive enough to record the slightest changes in the atmosphere, and yet strong enough to take the horrendous acceleration of one of the world's heaviest guns. The projectiles were named Martlet, after the legendary bird on the gill's crest. The technique works this way. The Martlet is protect protected by a sabot or sleeve that provides stability within the bore. It's sort of like firing a, a BB in a 303. An exploded diagram of a projectile, the sabot breaks away on leaving the gun. Dr. Bull says that it's not impossible with this technique to place a package in orbit or hit the moon. Last Friday, after nearly a week of delays, McGill fired its first test shot, a laminated plywood slug weighing 700 pounds. Its purpose, to check the gun installation and ballistic predictions. The chief of research for the United States Army, Major General Chester Clark, saw the shot in the last minutes of twilight before the sun set. Why is the United States Army so interested in this project, General Clark? Well, the, uh, the Army has a lot of interest in the basic research fields. We, we, we indulge in and uh, support research in many fields of science. Among these is meteorology. Obviously, the Army wants to know a great deal about the weather, weather prediction, both on the surface of the Earth where they fight and also in the upper atmosphere. Well, now this gun was commissioned for peaceful research. How do you explain the using the data for the military. Well, I, I think that may be just a matter of semantics, really. It was commissioned for peaceful research, but all of the Army's research is necessarily headed toward the things the Army is interested in. The, uh, we, we must always be prepared to take our part of the national defense. This is information which we think will be valuable to us. Well, could this technique be used in a weapon system? There must be some value in a gun that can shoot up to 700,000 feet. Well, I, I would say certainly uh, it could be used in the weapon system, but we have a lot better ways of doing this. This gun is, uh, and guns like it are in a fixed position. They can get up awfully high, this is true, but it's in a relatively small angle in space. And uh, we need things that can go uh, through a wide variety of angles and cover targets coming from many directions. Well, why didn't you let an American university do this research for you? Why McGill? Uh, this was a proposal made by McGill. Uh, there are people there up there in Canada, are old friends of ours. We've been working with them in various fields for years. And this is another project. looked good, and uh, we, we thought it was a, 
interest and potential value to us, so we have put uh, some financial support behind it. Uh, Plus, I, I should say, too, some of the uh, work in our laboratories is directly supporting this effort. Um, when it was first proposed, how did you look upon the probability of success? Did it appear to be very radical? Well, no, uh, not, not too radical. Uh, we had had similar interests. Obviously, guns are a pretty old uh, instrument, and uh, we know pretty well what they'll do. The, the, uh, it's certainly the McGill and the people up there showed a lot of imagination in uh, wanting to go to a, a large gun of this size. But they uh, had the imagination to foresee the potential of this, and we agreed with them. The test shot went so well that the McGill scientists moved directly to the Martlet 1B projectile, which would leave a flare trail but not carry instruments. The shots would essentially be a test of the design of the steel projectile and the sabot, which is made of metal-reinforced laminated plywood. The Martlet was placed in a quill which extends past the breech and is then shoved into the chamber. It may appear a little crude, perhaps a little slower old-fashioned, but this is the first time that it's ever been done. Of course, there's nothing like crawling into the gun to make certain of a perfect fit. The charge was 300 pounds of cordite. The gun had behaved so well the day before that they decided they'd go up to nearly one half charge. All precautions were taken to prevent accidents, and in the control room, these were tense minutes for Dr. Jerry Bull. Years of calculation, trials, and errors would soon be put to the test. Would the projectile behave as miniatures had in the laboratory? Would the fins provide the required effect? Was there too much propellant? Was the series being needlessly accelerated? A martlet 1B after only one slug instead of three. The gun would have to hold after... Here is a heart control, single control tower. Here is a map forecast for the area. Wind 090, one five knot, gusting to two five knot. Visibility one five nautical miles. Four up to six cumulus, five cumulus, one thousand eight zero zero feet. Three up to five alpha cumulus. In the radar bands, there was a, a vigilant watch on all aircraft and ships. The projectiles would impact the boat seven miles at sea after spending nearly two minutes in the air. The projectiles would also be tracked over the entire course. on lighthouses because they were among the few positions perfectly surveyed on the island. The old British Admiralty made certain of that. More than 60 cameras were on hand to record the shot, some filming at the rate of 5,000 frames a second. In other words, one second of the shoot would require three and one half minutes to screen. The cannon was elevated to 80 degrees higher than any of this type had ever gone before. Cameramen were moved away from their site. The protection of bunkers. Finally, a chance to talk to Dr. Bull. Dr. Bull, you've been working for this day for two years. How do you feel now? Well, we feel pretty good after that shot. It uh, looks like we had a fully successful launching. Uh, the gun's in excellent condition. Performed very well. The big installation, we had a little bit of problem uh, sealing off one of the cylinders, as you know, and 
we were a little bit worried about it. It settled right in, and the, the gun's performing after that long rest it's had for some 30, 40 years. Where do you go from here? Well, on this particular series, is it really an engineering series? Uh, we have the Model Twos to go. We have four of them standing by here that we will be launching this uh, this week, and they, they'll get us right up to the uh, uh, 150 to 200 kilometer band. That is uh, roughly say six, seven hundred thousand feet. This will have proven the uh, engineering performance. Then we will be starting in, we hope in April, in a series of firings of uh, upper atmospheric study. Uh, we will be putting up some smoke trails to study upper atmosphere uh, winds. Then we shall be releasing some uh, nitric oxide for chemiluminescent uh, titration type studies to determine atmospheric composition. I believe you're also doing some uh, studies of meteorites or their composition. <coughs> yes, we, uh, we ha will be flying on the Mylar 2 series some uh, um, explosive uh, launchers, that is a uh, it, high explosive, which is detonated and launches these small pellets out at uh, hypervelocities in, in the lower range of the medium velocity. Does the wind here on the beach, it seems to be blowing about 20 to 30 miles an hour, uh, have a detrimental effect on the projectiles? No, not at all. Uh, we come out of there at, uh, we're coming out between three and 5,000, 6,000 feet per second. And the wind is just, uh, doesn't affect us at all. And in fact, one of the uses anticipated for this type of technique is to launch probes into hurricanes where you have a real high wind velocity and you couldn't get another vehicle in. Why have you received more support from the Americans than from our own people? Well, that, that is a, that's rather a tough question. Uh, we, um, we felt that the uh, Americans would be more interested in the technique because of their, their very diversified program and, and uh, their known diversified approach to all problems. Uh, they'd be, we thought they'd be more receptive to uh, coming out with something that was perhaps not as conventional as, uh, uh, as we stand at the technique presently in use. Scientists here feel that the HARP project is limited only by man's ingenuity or imagination to find more work for it to do. It's a relatively inexpensive way to do this work. It provides hitherto unparalleled precision. It opens all sorts of prospects for smaller countries with limited research funds. There is also a feeling among scientists and observers here that it's a pity that there wasn't more Canadian interest shown this technique. There is McGill money on this project, certainly, but what started out as a Canadian concept has now become practically American-owned. The United States Army says what information will be released. Alouette was Canada's technological highlight of 1962, HARP, the first project of its kind by Western science and perhaps the world, may be our major technological achievement of 1963. This is Kingsley Brown on Barbados, returning you to Normandy Poe. Canada in space. Good night.